Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. With that, we head across the Atlantic to London. Standing by with a call and maybe a little jet lagged, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thank you. We are about 4,300 miles away from you there in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. From the booth, Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis. And Charles, this AFC South, the only division with three teams over 500 a year ago. Now, here in 2019, this may be the most wide-open division in the National Football League. In addition, it's a really improved division because for years, remember, Indianapolis ran this division. Then Houston popped up, and they took over. Jacksonville almost went to the Super Bowl just two seasons ago. And Tennessee was in the playoffs two years ago and almost got back there again last year. You're exactly right. This is a wide-open division. Should be a fun one to watch. Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And we are underway here in London. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They'll be led out by Gardner Minshew, six-round selection in 2019 out of Washington State. down is Minshew. He's got the hookup with Conley. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Now Leonard Fournette, and he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. And now a look at the offense for Jacksonville. And here comes Leonard Fournette, the big, and I mean big, tailback out of LSU. When he takes the ball inside, people make decisions about whether they want to tackle him or not, and he has enough speed to get to the perimeter and outrun defensive backs. When he puts it all together, he makes the Jaguars offense very difficult. He's got a first down and inside at midfield. 23 yards to pick up there. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A shotgun give to Fournette. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 10 yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Set, ready? Ten logo. Stay in situation. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now Minshew on first and ten. They'll get that to devolve the tight end. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. 
Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five job, down to the three. Good job, Starting lineup here defensively for Houston, and they picked up a former first-round pick, Garyon Conley of the Raiders, drafted 24th overall in 2017. He was shipped to the Texans on October 21st in exchange for a third-round pick next spring. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Looking to throw it. Minshew in trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. Can this defense get the stop on the opening drive? Here's third and goal. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And he'll get that to Fournette complete. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. And Lambeau will put this one through, and the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Deshaun Watson and his 10 offensive mates for Houston taking the field here. Watson in the lost Indianapolis Week 7. Again, over 300 yards and a touchdown pass, but sacked three times and two costly interceptions, including the one to Darius Leonard to seal the game. You know, I got to ask you about Watson. After what you've seen this year, is he on his way to being a true elite NFL quarterback? I think the answer is yes, and I think Houston knows that. That's why they made that move in the preseason when they made the trade for Laramie Tunsil to install him at left tackle. They want to do everything possible to make it good for this young man because he got sacked three times in this last one through the two costly interceptions. He's been hit a lot in his young career. They want that to go down. They want him to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. But I do say, yes, he's on his way to being elite because there's a magic to his game. When he plays, his team thinks they can beat anyone. Here's a stat that supports his elite status. He joins Cam Newton as the only players to ever pass for 7,500 yards and rush for 1,000 in their first 30 career games. Not bad. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. I'm coming after you. Now we'll play fake, and it's Watson. 
And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Josh Allen just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Two plays so far, run and a pass attempt, and both have gone backwards. Probably not how they drew that up. Not at all. <laughs> Looking for a better play coming up on third. Following the sack, it's now third and long for Watson and the Texans. Third and long, it's Watson. And this is going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Back deep for the Jags, D.D. Westbrook. Fielded just inside the 30. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville's offense retakes the field for their next possession. Got a 27-17 victory week seven to get to three and four, beating Cincinnati. You know, the offense struggled, though, Charles. Really, Leonard Fournette was the only one that got things going, 131 yards. Fortunately for them, Josh Lambeau remains perfect on the season, kicking field goals. He had four of them in the game, so he helped pay things off, and Jacksonville's defense made it all stand up against a Cincinnati team that is yet to win this year. Now, look at their schedule coming up. Home for the Jets. You would expect them to win that game. Then they go to London to play Houston. And that is a huge one before their open week in Week 10. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. DJ Reader there on the tackle. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half as some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 yards there, first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Ready, ready. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Minshew, first and 10. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. Called out a very strong gain of 24. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? They, let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage.
Second and goal 94. from the one. Let's go, defense. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And all this Texans defense, they're all charged up now. They stop him behind the line for the second straight play. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Here's Minshew. And that ball is caught by DJ Chart for the Jags touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. So this drive spans seven plays, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. the touchdown he'll kick this one away this will be taken in at the one and he'll be brought down at the 23 make it the 24 yard line CD let's discuss the AFC South as Houston comes back out here on offense because of that lost Indianapolis now they're a little bit behind the Colts a half a game in that division but it's a very tight division and these two teams at the top are intriguing yeah they are intriguing and remember the teams behind them we're talking about Jacksonville and Tennessee are both three and four so neither one of them is out of it but here's why I think Houston and Indianapolis have the advantage remember they split last season both of them made the playoffs now when you look at the quarterback position the most important position on any team Houston has their guy in Deshaun Watson. Indianapolis has their guy in Jacoby Brissett, even though before the season we thought it'd be Andrew Luck. But Andrew Luck never played this year. Brissett's had that team essentially since the offseason program. And then when you look at Jacksonville and when you look at Tennessee, both playing with backups right now. That's why I think Houston and Indianapolis have a major advantage. For the Texans, here's the upcoming schedule. They'll be home against the Raiders and then face the Jags in London. That's the division game before their Week 10 open week. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Here's a guy on his fourth franchise in two years, Carlos Hyde. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fit and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And that'll set them back five. Still third down. Let's 
Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. Out of the gun, Watson. He sets to fire deep. And got his man complete. The 20. Touchdown, Houston. Kiki QT, 74 yards as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Now Minshew. That one complete. He finds Sharp. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Minshew sets to throw. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. They brought the house that time on a young rookie, maybe a little rattled through the pick. And you have to be prepared for a lot of pressure as a rookie quarterback because most defensive coordinators are going to test you that way. So when you see that, the ball's got to get out of your hands quickly, and that means your receivers have to understand they have to break off their routes quickly as well. And now out comes Houston. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Back to throw, Watson. His throw incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target. And it's second down. And time to take a look at the Jaguar defense. One of the best names in the NFL, Yannick Ngakwe, is one of the better pass rushers in the NFL as well. Back-to-back -back seasons with nine sacks or more, he puts pressure on quarterbacks each and every snap. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Throwing again is Watson. He'll buy some time right. 
He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And finally, down at the 36-yard line. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice gain. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Off of play action, it's Watson. Complete here, it's Hyde. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back, on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. On the ground, this is Johnson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Stay on the ground on first for Johnson. And he stopped immediately there. D.J. Hayden, the corner, in on the tackle. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Throwing on second down. Watson, and he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Try the air now with Watson toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Get your backs to the goal line. I can hear my high school coach right now. This is when force meets force. Got to be physical in order to win this battle. <laughs> yeah, that's where the physicality pays off. A nice job forcing the contact and forcing the incompletion. Yeah, Coach Ford would have loved that play. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. They go option right on second and goal. And no pitch there and no chance either as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that is going to set up third and goal. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Delayed game, offense. 
And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still third down. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. A shotgun snap for Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will knot us up at 10. No one attempted or made more field goals than Fairbairn last year. He was 37 of 42. And they were grateful for every one of those that put three points on the board. But I guarantee you, Bill O'Brien, the head coach, is thinking to himself, we need to use them a lot less in 2019. Let's make sure we score some more touchdowns. All level now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me, that's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. He takes this for three to the 29. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping... Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The last seven run got three. Eight. Now here's second and seven. Yeah. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. Caught here by Conley. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Burp, burp. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46 yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. On second down, here's Fournette. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. They'll go play action here with Minshew. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. There defensively to knock it away was the safety, Justin Reed. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. On 
on fourth down on is Logan Cook to punt. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Our eyes shift to the defense of the Jaguars now. And as we're going to see right here, they have been laying some pretty electrifying hits in this one. And these are for real. Okay, as you watch, think about putting yourself in that spot, about being the ball carrier or the receiver. <laughs> I don't want to. And then taking that shot, it, it is something else. It's not like when we were watching that, that video clip where they showed you how they make sounds for movies. <laughs> this is for real. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's a second and five now from the 25. On the counter, this is high. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one... He looked like one of those guys. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three. To throw is Watson. He may try and run for this. Four yards there as they let him out of the pocket, and he got enough for the first. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. So first and 10 now from the 30. That's right, man. Gonna run the sweep here. This is Hopkins. And that would cover beautifully. Their defenders stayed home and they'll stop him behind the line. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Second and 13, Watson, and he'll find Aikens there, complete. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Only three yards on the catch, it's third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him up. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 33. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Yeah. 60 Pittsburgh. It's a part now. It's a part now. Now Fournette. And an alley to run. 
in and brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Now you talked about the need for them to establish the run early. They've been able to do that here in the first half. And that means that the whole offense has adopted that attitude and that persona. We're going to take care of this young quarterback. Let's all get together and run it and take the pressure off. Okay, ready? 18 Gator. Check, 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 41. They keep it with Fournette on first down. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. On second down, Minshew toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. DJ Chark, the intended target, and it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. And able to find Conley. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that makes it a 17-10 score. So that drive spanned five plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. the touchdown he'll kick this one away this is taken at the three and nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30 yard line and let's look at Carlos Hyde now and for him it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard maybe time to turn to this guy and you know me well winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They begin the drive with Johnson. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down. It's Johnson, and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And just like that, it's third down. 
Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. The Texans on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and seven. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson finding fouls complete. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. down a run with Hyde and he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five and we've hit the two minute mark in this first half of action A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced the ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Right here, right here. From the gun, here's Watson. Complete, it's Johnson. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll bring up second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's Watson. He's got four. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there and a first down. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. It's complete to Fuller. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, it's Watson. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. To the air yet again, Watson, and that is incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight, 
he was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now at 17-13. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. 18, Gator. You can't block me. You can't block me. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The running back, Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Okay, partner, let's mix things up a bit. This is something that's been a staple of morning television programs for a long time. Let's bring it to Madden. Some power rankings. Give me your top five through seven weeks. All right, I'll start with number five, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, he can throw it as well as run it, but his running, that's so exciting. Number four, the Green Bay Packers. Looks like Aaron Rodgers and his head coach, Matt LaFleur, Looks like they're in sync, and the Packers are playing off the well right now. Number three, San Francisco. Their defense built to travel. They can play anywhere and take on anyone, and they run the ball on offense. Number two, New Orleans. They've survived without Drew Brees. In fact, they flourished with Teddy Bridgewater, and their defense, vastly underrated, one of the top three in the league. And last but not least, shocker, New England. And I did think about putting New Orleans ahead of New England, but New England's defense is the best in the league. And Tom Brady on the other side, they still reign supreme. Come on, set. This quarterback now, 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. Now Minshew on first and 10. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. The Jaguars are going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Minshew, first and 10. He's got the hookup with Conley. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here at half number one. Ready? Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. It'll be Minshew again. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. D.D. Westbrook, his intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. One. 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up, second and 10. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room. Start over. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And he's going to have the hook up to QT. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. A throw out wide to QT, complete. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. 
Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Out of the gun, Watson. He finds Hopkins complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Watson looks to throw again. Open man is QT complete. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Watson in the offense going to come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Watson going to pull back the handoff and keep it himself. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Watson just beating the play clock. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now a play fake here on first down, and not able to get it that time. He hit on six straight passes, not there, second down. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but if they make them out of bounds, that does you no good. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Running from the gun, Johnson. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. A shotgun snap for Watson. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. And the Jags grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk-reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit and, in this case, lose the football so should have gone down i mean hindsight's always 20 20 but that's the same play you're exactly right. hindsight's really never wrong is it because you can analyze it but i think ultimately you got to look at it as a first option taking care of the ball getting what you can and that's it don't worry about it anymore They begin with a run by Fournette. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. Yeah. 
From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And an alley to run. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, put a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. 70, Indy. Hey, check, check. Second and five now. Minshew, and he completes it to Westbrook. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. 60 outlaw. Here we are. Fournette running out of the gun. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. Quick pass to the outside caught by Conley. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. Caught here by Conley. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. And give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 that backs him up one yard and brings up third down well, i know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football don't drop it but drop it there yeah in that situation <laughs> dropping it would have been better end up losing yardage even though they completed the pass as good as a sack yeah how about that although they won't get the same credit for it and it won't help them at contract time and the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. So third and long, here's Minshew. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. D.J. Reader. 
Able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sass. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Now after the main field goal, back out, Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 22. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Watson, open man, the tight end fouls. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Following the penalty, it's Hyde. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Four yards there on the carry, gets it back to second and 11. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Four yards on the pick up there, and now they're left with a third and eight. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 42. 
He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Watson now to throw, and that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. D.J. Hayden right there on the coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Watson off play action. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Got an open man. It's QT. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. What well, may seem a little unorthodox to some people, got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. This is Fournette. Up to make the stop, the Texans' leading tackler a year ago, Zach Cunningham. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Out of the gun is Minshew. And that will be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, 
really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They start the drive with high. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. 11 yards there, first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. In 2018, Deshaun Watson had five fourth-quarter comebacks. Only Drew Brees of the Saints had more with six. Here's Watson. Complete. It's Johnson. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Come on. Now Watson. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryant. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Following the sack, it's now third and long for Watson and the Texans. Throwing on third down, Watson. And this is caught by Fells, right side. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Here's Brian Anger now, standing right on his own five-yard line. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing them all sorts of trouble. They'll run with Fournette. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling. So they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward. And they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. On second down, Minshew. 
And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. That was very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Minshew sets to throw. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 22. From the gun, here's Watson. It's complete to Hopkins. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Watson operating from the gun. And a catch made by Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? On first and 10, Watson. It's complete to Fuller. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Here we go. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Here's Watson. He's got Fuller. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Eight yards on the pick up. Brings up second and two at the 30 yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. They run the counter. High, and he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Offense. That's on the first round pick, number 23 overall, Titus Howard. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Out of the gun, Watson. He finds Hopkins complete. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. 
fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Operating from the gun, Watson rolling to his right. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him a couple on the scramble, it's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Now it's Watson. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. A seven-yard touchdown grab. As they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. So very late in the game here, but with that score, some light at the end of the tunnel. There's still hope. Now they look at the score and say, hold on a second. This thing's not over yet. Let's keep battling. for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbair. And the lead is down to a field goal now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. Now Minshew. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. D.J. Reeder able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Here's Minshew. That's out to his running back, Fournette. Six yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Minshew throwing on third down. He'll get that to devalve the tight end. 
And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, and worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. First down is Minshew. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. totally home free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and ten three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth so it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back they've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off on the run it's Fournette and he's going to get this inside the 30. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 155 remaining. before he's brought down. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. set up the screen to Fournette and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16 yard line the Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play they only got a yard out of that last completion and that makes this second and nine that one looks like he'll throw here. And this is incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw at any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Now play number eight on this drive. And they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. <laughs> On third down, Fournette. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage. Back at the 17. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Lambeau is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. Josh. 
Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So Deshaun Watson in the offense. Down by six, a little over 50 seconds remaining. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. They'll get 20 and a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. Boy, that is a seven-yard loss. Second down now. Five seconds, four seconds. One last throw here for Watson. And a catch made by Hopkins. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say cheerio from London.